I got a few questions um, and I'm going to make this video just to answer those questions. So the first question, um, why did I stop using the Philco and kind of what my impressions were, how long it lasted. Uh, so here's the Philco right here. Um, there's a few reasons why I stopped using the Philco. So I had this keyboard for maybe three years or something like that. Um, and it was a good board. It's not a bad board. Um, but after using this for you know three years, I wanted something different. And so actually I ended up using this, uh, which is an Ortholinear Keyboards Atomic. Um, so a very peculiar board. Um, Ortholinear refers to the keys are aligned um, in a grid as opposed to being staggered like uh, most other boards. And so I used this for about half a year, I wanna say. Um, and it's a pretty interesting board, took a little bit of time to get used to. It was a, a built board, so I built it from, from just parts. Um, but in the end, I got kind of tired of using this one and wanted something else. So I was gonna go back to the Philco. Um, then that's where the problem was, I guess. So the problem was, one, the board's pretty old and, and just kind of worn out, I guess. It's, it's seen a lot of stuff. And the other thing was the cable on the board, which is right here. Um, so this cable started fraying. So where it connects um, to the board back here, there's this little rubber, so it's permanently attached. On the Philco board, the cable's permanently attached. And there's this little rubber stress reliever thingy that's in there like that. Not a very good background, but anyway, you get the idea. And that was starting to uh, give out. The, the cable where it attached there was starting to show wear. Um, so it actually broke through this uh, outside casing. And so the inside wires were showing and was weak and they were probably gonna break at some point because the cable's permanently attached. I kind of wind it around the keyboard and so this, this is different. This is my attempt to, I cut off some of the cable and then I attempted to uh, re-solder them back together to try to join it and just make it work. But it was uh, pretty difficult. I just kind of got frustrated. I probably could do it if I really wanted to, but I was just like, you know what? I, I just want a new board. So I went around searching for a new board also because you know I, I play games a lot. And so having the full-size board was, was kind of getting in the way of my mouse and things like that. So I was searching around um, for a board and I came across these, the Philco's, um, the FC 980Ms, and I really liked them. And so basically I got one, the blue switch one first, um, and then I liked it so much I got the brown switch for work, and then I haven't really used this one since. I mean, the cable's been disconnected. So that's, that's kind of the reason why I stopped using the Philco. Um, a few other things, I guess, um, more vanity than anything else. You can see here, let me try adjusting the focus a bit. There you go. That the case on this is pretty messed up. Um, it looks like it's been through something and it has. Um, I actually tried to paint the case white um, spray paint. So originally it was, you know, a fine finish, kind of similar to the finish on, on these boards. Um, but I, I basically tried to spray paint it. I put the coat on a bit too thick, had to sand it down and intended on sanding it very smooth and trying again, but I just kind of, uh, both lost interest and got frustrated with it because it's very difficult to sand this plastic smooth. So kind of just left it the way it was. Um, a few other things about the wear, I guess, are the keys. These are printed on top. I know Philco now, maybe they did back then, I'm not sure, but they now make ones where that are printed on the front, um, like the Leopold. So the, the key pad printing won't be as much an issue where they wear off, but the keys are still uh, ABS. And so you're gonna get shine and these have a lot of shine on them. Um, you can see like on the space bar, there's a shiny spot there and a lot of the keys. So um, the PBT on the Leopold won't really develop that shine, but the ABS on the, on the Philco's definitely will. All right, so that's the reason for why I stopped using the Philco. Um, and yes, so I do, I do prefer the Leopold. That's the second question. Would I, would I go with Leopold or would I go with Philco? Definitely go with the Leopold. Uh, the Leopolds are cheaper than the Philco's. Um, from what I've checked, anywhere between you know, 10, 15, 20 dollars cheaper, which is pretty good. I think the build quality is a bit better. Um, the Philcos aren't bad, but I think the, the Leopolds are just a, a notch above in terms of build quality. Um, you get PBT keycaps, which is really nice, um, versus the ABS. I'm pretty sure the Philcos are still ABS keycaps. And 
the cable. Now this is this is something that you know maybe isn't the most important, but for me, having the cable permanently attached on the Philco and having it you know fray and break, uh, that was kind of annoying. Whereas on the, all the Leopolds, um, the cable is detachable, right? So it's just a standard mini uh, USB that plugs in there. And if the cable ever something happens to it, or even if you want to transport it, you can just unplug it. Um, but if something ever happens to the cable, you can just get another one. Uh, and, and plug it in and it'll work. So that's a, a big advantage to me. Um, and especially when I'm storing the keyboard, I don't have to like wrap the cord around it, which, which is kind of ridiculous. Let me readjust the focus, sorry about that. Um, and then the last thing, if you want a 1800 layout, so you want the numpad, but you don't want these you know, navigational keys here, uh, you're pretty much gonna have to go with the Leopold because Philco does not make that layout as far as I know. Um, so yeah, I would recommend the Leopold over the Philco. And let's see, I think that's, that's all for, for the comparison between those two. And then uh, let's see, the layout. So yeah, a little bit of a close up on the layout here. So let me readjust this focus again, sorry. Something like that. Anyway, so um, the, the function key is right here. So there's no Windows key or, um, there's no Windows key on this, on this right side. Um, there's all three control windows alt on this side this side they have an alt key and then this is a combined control and menu key so normally it acts as control but if you hold the function and press it then it'll be the menu key that pulls down you know file or edit or whatever the key that no one really uses um, but this function key also does other things as well so according to the manual which i will just flash on the screen here um, hopefully this is enough in focus and not super shiny um, but yeah, so if you do function plus I, so the I key, you hold down function, you press I, it'll do print screen. Um, so that, that key is still there. It also has scroll lock, pause, home end, the application that I talked about before, and then the toggle for the USB and key rollover. That's probably not very in focus, but yes. Yeah, so if you hold this function key down, doop, and then you hit the I key, uh, doop, that'll do print screen. Um, so yes, I think all the keys that you would find on a normal full-size keyboard, um, including pause, including scroll lock, including print screen, um, those are all going to be on this board. Um, a few of the less common ones, like those ones I mentioned, are going to be hidden on the function layer, but most everything else is, is here. But they're all there in one form or another. So uh, you're not really losing much functionality. Um, if some people use like the home and, and an insert and delete keys a lot, um, they might find, may find it a little bit annoying to have to reach up here to hit those keys because they're not exactly uh, as intuitive as if you're, you know, hitting them right here. But for me, it was, it was very worth it because I mean, the size comparison, right? Um, it's just so, so much more of a compact board. Um, you, you really do get like two, two inches. Um, I don't have a measuring, I'm gonna say two. I attempt to say two and a half, but I think it's just about two. Um, you do really get a more compact board uh, and you still get that full numpad. So that's that's the real advantage I saw with this board in addition to the quality. Um, the, the other Philco's like there's a FC750R, there's a 900R, there's a 660. Or whatever M or whatever they are, there's all the different the different series. They're all going to be the same quality and build as as these boards. It's just different layout. So if you prefer a different layout than the um, than the 1800 layout, then any of those boards will will serve you very well as well. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. Um, let me know if you have any more questions. Um, yeah, but I mean, I've had these boards. Uh, the the blue switches I've had for uh, probably a year now and the browns maybe coming up on a year or maybe like three quarters of a year or something like that. So I've had them for a long time. They, I have like very few complaints, if any. Um, I guess I could say I wish the, the indicator uh, LEDs were a different color than blue because um, blue is not really my favorite, but it's a pretty safe color. I'd prefer white, but other than that, um, yeah, that's really the only thing I can, I can complain about. Um, the boards are just, you know, nice, nice boards overall, very solid, can't really go wrong. And they're so cheap. I mean, these ones are like 110, 115 bucks, um, for, for a quality board that'll last a really long time. I think that's a pretty great deal. 
uh, especially compared to what some other, and they're widely available. Um, MechanicalKeyboards.com is where I got mine. And, um, you know, compared to other boards, I didn't really see a reason to get uh, anything else besides these. So anyway, this video has been going on long enough. Uh, that's, that's, that's it. That's it. Let me know if you need anything else. See ya.